Dear colleagues, I hope all of you are well and safe. I'm very happy today to introduce the Global Gas Report 2020. This is our flagship study that we've created in collaboration with the IGU and with Bloomberg and EF. Uh, the report examines the key trends in the sector and we provide also strategic insights on the future of energy and the role that gas can play along the value chain in the energy transition. After a very strong 2019, when we saw a global gas demand grow by 2%, uh, mainly due to coal to gas switching and a 13% increase in LNG due to lowering prices, 2020 is proving to be, as in most other sectors, a very exceptional year. We expect overall demand to drop by around 4%, but we are seeing a faster than expected recovery in some sectors, and we expect a strong recovery uh, of gas demand as the economic recoveries and the financial stimulus uh, get underway. As we enter a post-pandemic uh, period, uh, environmental uh, awareness has risen significantly, and the environmental impact of um, how to abate emissions will become increasingly important. Of course, uh, gas uh, replacing coal is one of the quickest and most effective ways of reducing greenhouse gases uh, and at the same time improving uh, air quality uh, significantly. The, uh, this year we've inserted a special section on the role that hydrogen can play. We think that hydrogen can play a very significant role in the energy transition. Uh, Bloomberg uh, estimates that 37% of energy related greenhouse gas emissions can be avoided uh, due and thanks to hydrogen. And while clean hydrogen made from renewable energy uh, is uh, not yet entirely cost competitive, we see costs coming down very significantly from around $4 per kilo today to $2 per kilo in 2030 and below $1 per kilo in 2050. So for hydrogen to reach its potential, we need a concerted effort. We need to work together along the value chain. Uh, we need dedicated infrastructure. We need uh, re, um, refurbishment of existing infrastructure. We essentially need a well-organized hydrogen system. We don't have a lot of time because 2030 is, is very close in, in energy infrastructure terms. We need to find a way to manage, uh, to balance the supply and, and the demand in the most cost effective way. We need to build infrastructure that is hydrogen ready and that is future proof so that we avoid uh, what we've done in the past is to invest in infrastructure that then uh, became stranded. We also at the same time need to worry about the long distance transport for hydrogen. It will be very cost competitive and it will be very industrially uh, appealing to develop big solar parks uh, where there is availability of significant land and sun, such as in North Africa or uh, certain parts of Southern Europe. And we see in uh, many national energy policies that are beginning to emerge, such as a German energy policy for hydrogen envisages a significant amount of uh, imported hydrogen uh, that can come from uh, Spain and indeed can come from North Africa uh, through Italy. So all in all, hydrogen represents a great opportunity, it will require significant coordination. That's why Europe has launched its hydrogen alliance to make sure that uh, the multiple stakeholders involved are working together from the onset. And we think this also has great potential from a policy perspective to accelerate the transition. As this happens, of course, this will uh, make the gas infrastructure and the current uh, gas capabilities uh, really uh, a significant part of the energy transition. So I really hope you find uh, this report a valuable source of information and that you will contribute to spreading some of its contents in your uh, companies and if possible also in your countries.